In the name of the Father, and of the and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all evildoers will be stubble, and the day that is coming will set them on fire, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. But for you who fear my name, there will arise the Son of Justice with his healing rays. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know how one must imitate us, for we did not act in a disorderly way among you, nor did we eat food received free from anyone. On the contrary, in toll and drudgery, night and day we worked, so as not to burden any of you. Not that we do not have the right. Rather, we wanted to present ourselves as a model for you so that you might imitate us. In fact, when we were with you, we instructed you that if anyone was unwilling to work, neither should eat or drink. We hear that some are conducting themselves among you in a disorderly way by not keeping busy, but minding the business of others. Such people we instruct and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to work quietly and to eat their own food. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you, they will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. A representative from the Collegium will be available in the parish hall after Mass to speak to anyone interested in a liberal arts college specifically dedicated to serving traditional Catholic students and families. There will be information about a tuition freeze for parishioners of St. John Cantus Church who apply by December 1st. Next Sunday is the last Sunday of the liturgical year. If you have not yet done so, stop by Beretta Books to pick up your copy of Pius Parsha's Year of Grace, Volume 1, to assist you in your Advent preparation for Christmas. The second collection today is for the Canchin Fund for Church Maintenance. And this Mass, this Mass is being offered for Kevin O'Connor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, here at the end of the liturgical year, the Church places before us themes of end times and judgment. 
As certain as the trees and flowers lose their foliage each year, entering the death of winter, so will the entire material universe come to an end at a time known to God alone. Yet also, just as new growth, the new growth of spring follows winter, so does resurrection and a new creation come forth after the death and the destruction of this world. God's judgment will reveal how we spend eternity. The prophet Malachi speaks of fire for the proud and the evildoers, but of healing for the humble, for those who revere and trust in the one true living God. Thus will God ultimately right all the wrongs of this world. Christians have faced persecution throughout our 2,000-year history, from mild and subtle to manifest and horrific. Jesus prophesies that persecution will be particularly intense near the end of the world. The purpose of his prophecy is not to haunt us, but rather to bolster our hope for the execution of God's justice will soon follow after, again, redeeming those who trust in him, those who are humble, who are faithful, and who are repentant. These are sobering considerations, and the church realizes the weight of anxiety that they tend to bring about. The likelihood of persecution and trial and the fact of our own mortality and the passing nature of this world, together with God's judgment, are indeed a call to assess our priorities and adjust our lives accordingly. So rather than remain silent on these important realities, so as to perhaps spare us any discomfort, Mother Church instead makes sure to case them in the larger reality, the larger context of God's goodwill toward us. The introit chant that led us to the altar at the beginning of Mass comes from the prophet Jeremiah and reads, the Lord said, I think thoughts of peace and not of affliction. You will call upon me, and I will answer you. This declaration of God's love and dedication to his people come from an episode where he is trying to pound it into the heads of the exiled Jews in Babylon that he has a plan for them and that they just need to trust him. His plan entails struggle, yes, but it ultimately secures our true welfare. We must trust. Of course, trusting in God does not mean that we just sit around and do nothing waiting for him to save us. Trusting in God means setting ourselves upon doing his will through thick and thin, in whatever circumstances I find myself, knowing that God will help me. Trusting in God means humbly confessing my sins, knowing that God will both forgive me and support me in amending my life. Trusting in God means surrendering myself to the purifying action of his providence, knowing that he is thereby drawing me closer to himself. Trusting in God means striving for holiness through commitment to prayer and self-denial, through fidelity to the duties of my state in life and loving my neighbor, knowing that God's will is ultimately my sanctification. 
God knows what we need to sustain us in his love. He knows that the faith and trust he asks of us are beyond our natural abilities. Thus, he provides himself every grace we need and more, particularly through the Holy Eucharist. It is indeed by the power of the Holy Eucharist, faithfully adored and worthily received, that we shall persevere in trust and fidelity and so partake of Christ's victory in eternal glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God's providence governs history as well as the course of our own lives. Trusting in that loving providence, we now bring to the Lord all the needs of our one human family. That the church may proclaim with joyful hope the resurrection of the dead in Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. For all who do not believe in eternal life, that they may come to know the living God who offers the fullness of life and everlasting peace to everyone. We pray to the Lord. That world leaders may seek always the wisdom, mercy, and strength that come from God alone. We pray to the Lord. For all who labor on the land and gather the earth's harvest, we pray to the Lord. That the sick may be consoled, the lonely comforted, and all the oppressed set free, we pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the holy priesthood and to consecrated life, especially to the canons regular of St. John Cantius, we pray to the Lord. That all who have died may rejoice in eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, continue to protect us with your grace. Provide for our needs that we may always trust you and serve you faithfully. Grant this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead. We hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Amen. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.